I've noticed that some people are struggling with the order of operations when integers are involved, so I want to make a video to have as a reference when doing your homework. So if we looked at the first homework assignment, it says 3 minus 6 squared. So if we follow the order of operations, do we have any parentheses? No. Do we have any exponents? Yes, we have a 6 squared. So I can rewrite this as 3 minus 6 times 6 because that's what an exponent means. It means this base multiplied by itself however many times that exponent says. Then, when I rewrite that, well, what is 6 times 6? That turns into 36. So if I have a 3 and a negative 36, what do I end up with? Well, if we think of this in terms as money I have and money I owe. If I have $3 in my pocket, I go to the counter and I owe 36. I give my $3 up, how much is my remaining balance? Well, the difference, when my signs are different, I have a positive and a negative, I have to find the difference between my two digits. The difference between 36 and 3 is 33. And then I decide, well, did I have a greater positive value or a greater negative value? I had more negatives, so this is a negative 33. And so we type in the negative 33, hit enter, voila, that green check mark is always so satisfying. So we'll skip down a little ways. Okay, now we have a parentheses and an exponent. So if I have negative 5, positive 3, and that solution is then squared. Parentheses says solve what's inside the parentheses before you worry about what's outside of it. If I have a negative 5 and a positive 3, my signs are different, so I have to find the difference. What's the difference between 5 and 3? There's a difference of 2. And my I had more negatives than I had positives, so this is a negative 2. So I still wrap that around parentheses because of that negative sign and the exponent being on whatever this solution was. So if I have a negative 2 times, a, times itself, that means negative 2 times negative 2, a negative times a negative is a positive, 2 times 2 is 4. So this simplifies to 4. Now if we look at an expression like this, People get a little freaked out because there's a lot of numbers and operations going on. But we don't, it, it's like a recipe for, for cooking. You're not going to be distracted by step number six if you're only on step number one. It's the same thing here. We start off with parentheses. Now we see the parentheses here, but this P, this parentheses does not relate to the first step parentheses. There's no operation occurring inside of it. It's just a number inside of it. There's no simplifying to do. This parenthesis here is an organ is representing multiplication between the 7 inside of it and the 4 that's touching the outside of the parenthesis. Then if we look at the 12 that's wrapped in the parenthesis or the negative 12 wrapped in parenthesis, all that is is an organizational way to separate an adding negative 12 because you can't just have a plus minus sign next to each other. You need a parentheses to separate them and organize them. So we don't actually have any parentheses to clear out. Then we look, do we have any exponents? No. So my next step is I have to multiply or divide. Both of these make up the third step of PEMDAS. One is not more important than the other or more powerful. It just has to do with which one do you come across first as you work from left to right. Well, I have a, an addition, I have a division, and I have a, an addition and a multiplication. So I need to clear out the division. These are the two numbers between my division. So I have just a negative 5 being added to whatever the quotient of negative 12 and 6 is. Well, negative 12 divided by 6, 12 divided by 6 is 2, but a negative divided by a positive is a negative. And then I have a 4 times 7. So I'm going to add the, the product of 4 and 7. 4 times 7 is 28. Now in this case, this sign here, this doubling up, really doesn't add any value. This is just sometimes algebra's fancy way of saying, I want to add this number with this number. But it basically breaks down to, I have a negative 5, I have a negative 2, and I have a positive 28. 
Then the what I like to do, so then we have no more multiplication or division, so now we add or subtract from left to right. This is a little different. You can go ahead and combine like terms if you want. Group all of your negative numbers up together to find out how much you have. Group all your positive ups, up, positives up together, and then find the difference between the two. So uh, in this case, it works out from left to right as well. But if I have a negative 5 and a negative 2, same signs mean I find the sum. I get to add them together. 5 plus 2 is 7. And they're both negative numbers, so it's a negative 7. If you think of it in terms of money, I owe somebody 5 and I owe somebody 2. So how much do I owe all together? I owe 7. So I have a negative 7 and positive 28. I have different signs, so I find the difference between 28 and 7. 28 minus 7 is going to be 14. Uh, oops, <laughs> I jumped too far. 21. Uh, and then I had seven negatives, but I had 28 positives, so guess what? That 21 is also going to be positive because that was a bigger quantity. Now we have an expression where we have an exponent and a bunch of multiplication and a subtraction. So I know based on PEMDAS, E comes before M or S. So 3 squared means 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And then when I'm looking at this, I have three numbers because they're all next to each other. There's no operation symbol uh, happening in between them other than the parentheses. All of these numbers are being multiplied together. It doesn't matter which order I multiply it in. I multiply in whatever order makes it the easiest for me. So if I look at this 4 and 5, well, 4 times 5 makes 20. And if I have three 20s, I have 60. So this negative, I just drop that down there because I can also think of this as two positives multiplied together make a positive. A positive then times a negative makes a negative. So when I do a bunch of multiplying all at once, I can just worry about counting my signs and saving that for the end. If I have an odd number of negative signs, I have a negative answer. If I have an even number of negative signs, those negative signs cancel out and I get to have a positive answer. So then I have a positive 9, negative 60, different signs. I find the difference. 60 minus 9 is going to be 51, and my negative was larger, so it's negative 51. Now here we got a bunch of negative signs, but we only focus on the step of PEMDAS we are on. The first step, exponents. So this means because the exponent with the parenthesis around that, that exponent distributes to the negative and to the 5. So it's a negative 5 times a negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. But I have a negative outside the parentheses. That negative outside literally is translated to the opposite of whatever is inside the parentheses. Well, the opposite of positive 25 is negative 25. So this is all done. Now I have a positive 2 times a negative 5. Positive times a negative makes a negative. 2 times 5 makes 10. So if I owe 25 and I owe 10, guess what? I owe 35. Here we have a whole bunch of stuff going on. What we have here are brackets. And this is another level of parentheses. When we have the traditional parentheses, that means we solve what's inside that before we worry what's inside then the brackets before we worry about what's outside of the brackets. So it's all just a way to help us organize what process we need to be doing in what order. So we need to start off inside the brackets, ignoring the negative sign outside of it. Based on that, inside the parentheses, negative 5, positive 4, different signs, find the difference. I have a negative 1, and that negative 1 is squared, which means a negative 1 times a negative 1, which is a positive 1. And that positive 1, because the negative 2 is right outside the parentheses with no operation occurring between it and the parentheses symbol, that means it is supposed to be multiplying by whatever this evaluated and simplified to, and then I have a 1 in front of it. Okay, so being a little lazy and not writing all my symbols. So now I go, if I have a subtraction, there's a subtraction sign, but I have a multiplication, so I need to do that first. Negative 2 times positive 1 turns into negative 2 and 1. 
Well, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then we're just going to treat this like a parenthesis sign because that's all it is. It's just a, a different level of it. The opposite of a negative 1 is a positive 1. So all that parenthesis on the out, or all that negative on the outside is trying to do is say make the inverse of whatever's inside. Just the opposite of. So you just switch out the sign and there's your answer. And last but not least is absolute values. Absolute value just means how far away from zero a number is. So it doesn't matter whether it's going right towards the positive or left towards the negative, it's how many places away. So it always simplifies to a positive answer. So if I have four minus eight, the difference between four and negative eight is negative four. But then the absolute value is how far away from zero is negative four? It is four places away. So we go over here, minus 7 minus 5 is positive 2, and the absolute value of 2 is 2. But wait, because there is a negative sign outside that absolute value, when this gets simplified, there's still a negative on it. So it is actually simplifying to a negative 2. So this is the only time an absolute value ends up negative. And there's a negative outside the absolute value sign. So now I have 4 minus 2, and we have 2. So I hope that has helped you understand the order of operations with integers.